Time now to take a look at K-State's volleyball team. It's been a rough season so far for Susie Fritz and the K-State volleyball team. The Lady Cats have struggled in the Big 12 Conference as their freshmen have adjusted to top-tier competition. But they finally found some solid footing as their season winds down. The Cats took on the Texas Tech Red Raiders this past Sunday night. Going into the match, K-State was just 4-10 in Big 12 play, while Tech sat at the bottom of the Big 12 standings with an 0-14 record. The Cats seized momentum early in the first set, taking a 3-0 lead after two kills from junior outside hitter Julianne Chisholm. The Red Raiders never seemed to close the gap on the Lady Cats. They won it in convincing fashion at 25-17. The second set was a little closer, but still ended in another K-State win, 25-17. The Raiders then stepped it up a notch and came out of the intermission on fire, getting a 7-2 lead. The Cats fought back, but were still defeated, 18-25. K-State came out re-energized for the fourth set, jumped out to a 3-0 lead, and kept on top for the rest of the game. It was a K-State victory, winning the last set 25-13 and taking the match. Now over to Fox Creek Stables and the nationally ranked equestrian team. Senior Josie Kness competing in the horsemanship discipline in the Western competition in this t competition today against Texas A&M. Starting out with a light lope here. Riders are expected to adhere to certain speeds and gates according to the riding pattern set in place. The lap of this competition consists of a series of circles and diagonal cuts. The horse sister is responding well to the rider here. That's a prime thing to look for in these competitions, responsiveness and connection between horse and rider. Right now, the horse is leading with the right leg, meaning the right stretches out past the left in the gate. At some point during the lap, however, the rider is expected to direct the horse to switch the lead foot. Points are awarded according to how smooth the transition is. And right there's the switch, just past the cone. Pace is picked back up again. Josie's keeping an upright position here. Good form. At this point, she has to break the circular pattern and guide the horse in a square. The horse is now in a jog, about to cut the corners of this square. Riders must memorize these laps and gates before every competition, which isn't too easy of, an a, of a task. Josie seems to be keeping her focus here, keeping the right fist tight, holding the reins of the left, almost to a stop right here at the cone. Soon we'll be picking it back up. And now it's back into a trot. We're nearing the end of the lap here. Normally laps are just around two to three minutes long, this lap being about two. Now Josie must stop the horse completely from a jog here at the end of this lap after she rounds this corner. This can be a difficult task for anybody. The smoother this stop and circle is, the more points are awarded. And right here's a stop. Turning in a circle right here, keeping it pretty smooth, staying in place. The lap is complete. And Josie ends with a score of 71. We hit the ground running on our home competitions this year and uh, stole the show against uh, previously national champions, uh, Texas Christian, which was awesome to kick off the year. Went ahead and we went and beat Baylor at home right after that. So we're having an awesome season. Um, can't wait to see how this competition turns out, but I know that the girls will have a fantastic rest of the season in the spring as well. The equestrian team won the western portion of the competition by a one-point margin. Texas A&M, though, battled back to win the English seat portion by the same score. The judges then tallied up the total scores of each team. A&M defeated the Cats by a margin of 63 points. Well, we're almost done here at Purple Power Play, but Brett, you're going to have to take the reins because after those back-to-back -back highlights, my voice is a little hoarse. You know, that, that works out fine for me, Andy, because I could use a good workout. And the men's basketball team certainly provided that. I went out to Bramlage to follow the Cats as they moved up and down the court in their first and only exhibition contest. On Sunday, Frank Martin's much-anticipated squad finally got the chance to so showcase their talents against Pittsburgh State. Let's take it out to Bramlage. Where some familiar faces were introduced for the Wildcats, who are ranked 39th in the preseason polls. Here, Jacob Pullen with the drive and miss. Wally Judge, highly recruited, Pick up, pulled out, and won. Judge finished with eight points and ten boards in his debut. The Cavs also got it done on the defensive end as Curtis Kelly invites the girls to the block party here as Kansas State jumped out to an early 20-point lead. Later, Jacob Pullen here with the sweet backdoor dish to Curtis Kelly, 
for the flush. And then again, pulling again with a nice dime to Kelly for the easy deuce. The Wildcats ended the first half up 42 to 20, but the offense was just heating up behind junior Jacob Pullen. Pullen here with a sweet cough, so whoop, step back three. Nailed it, and he goes again and transition pulls up, wet. He hit four threes in the second half for a game high 17 points. The Cats were up 43 points at one point in the second half. And here in transition off the Gorilla Miss, Denny Clemente out to freshman Nick Russell for the three. And the Frosh was one of five Wildcats in double figures with 10 points. For, finally, Wally Judge with a sweet high-low pass to Jamar Samuels for the dunk. As the Wildcats roll 89-53 over the Gorillas. While heading into Puerto Rico would be nice, it'd be even better to see this team unscathed heading into their matchup with the preseason number one Kansas Jayhawks. That would be quite the accomplishment, accomplishment, Brett. But January 30th is a long ways away. We've got plenty happening between now and then. Coming up on Purple Power Play next week, we have quite the lineup for you. Highlights from men's and women's basketball, a senior profile on Grant Gregory. And the latest on Manhattan High School's bid for a state title. Speaking of which, aren't they playing a school you're familiar with? No, that's right. I'm a Wichita Heights graduate. I've also seen my fair share of Manhattan High football games. Should be a good game this weekend at Bishop Stadium. Well, I guess that's going to do it for Purple Power Play this week. I'm Andy Burns. And I'm Brett Regan. Take care, K-State.